Well, gentlemen, you have my curiosity, but now you have my attention. Dashing through the snow, not sure where to go. Cobra. 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 Eating lots of cake, knowing how to bake. Cobra. 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 <laughs> Chill. Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior, the Earth's mightiest action figure video podcast. So take off your pants, crack a beer, and let's talk toys. I had a little bit of extra pep in my step with that one, because it's been a while. It's been a while since I have done a stupid video. Did you miss me? I know some of you did. I'm going to talk to you about G.I. Joe. Why? Here's why. Because I've I'm into G.I. Joe now. Didn't think that was going to be a thing, but here we are. <laughs> Surrounded by G.I. Joe figures, all thanks to you guys who enable this stuff. So you just saw my review recently on Cobra Commander. <laughs> I know who I'm talking about. Cobra Commander, who is so awesome. And then I was inundated with messages of, oh, well, Dave, if you got Cobra Commander, you gotta get this guy and you gotta get that guy. And fortunately, I have some amazing good brothers who watch this show who were like, I'll tell you who you need to get. And better than that, I'm gonna straight up send them to you. Mark, dude, first of all, a couple of people to thank. Mark, thank you. He said, how would you like a couple of troopers to go with your Cobra Commander? I'm like, dude, of course I... F yeah, free stuff? Mm, mm, yes, please. Where do I sign up? A package arrives with six. Six Cobra Troopers. Honestly, you know, that's um, that's kind of deceptive, actually, Mark. It's kind of duplicitous. All right, you told me one thing, and then you did another. That, my friend, is a lie. Because I was expecting two, and I got an entire platoon of Cobra Troopers. So freaking awesome. And the only bad thing is, I'm looking at these going... Man, these are so much better than so many other action figures that I have. I now have to get into G.I. Joe. Because what I realized, looking at Joe and the, all the different characters and sort of the stories and the styles, it's Metal Gear Solid. And Metal Gear Solid is one of my favorite franchises, brands of all time. And this, all these characters, this is totally just fits that aesthetic. Secret, army, espionage, intrigue, crazy characters, villains with different motifs and styles and gimmicks. Ah, oh, I just, I love this. And it's funny, I'm not going to go back and watch the old G.I. Joe cartoons. I watched the G.I. Joe movie and stuff like, it's super cheesy. It's a kid's thing. And if you, if you weren't into it as a kid, you're not going to go back and be like, G.I. Joe. And like, yes, at 40 years old, this is brilliant. No, it's fine. The same reason I don't go back and watch the Transformers. It's the, the love I have for it is for the nostalgia. It's not for, you know, what it actually was, which was a kid's cartoon. Although some of those after school and now you know messages is probably going to do me some good, but <laughs> it's too late for that. So let's take a look at, first of all, we've got two different flavors of Trooper here. So I was told, I think, I'm going to get this the wrong way around, but I think the one with the lighter skin tone is the sniper infantry guy, or this guy's the infantry guy, and then we have the sniper. What I'm saying is, they look so good. Oh my goodness. These guys are dripping with accessories to a fault. I will say, because some of them just, it's difficult to get them to hang on because there's so much stuff here and you clip them on to the back and it's like you don't want to knock them too much or stuff will fall off. But you know what? If the biggest problem I have with an action figure is that they have so many accessories, it's hard for them to hold on to. Yeah, you know what? That's uh, it's kind of a happy problem right there. So let's take a look at this Cobra infantry sniper assault guy. First of all, we've got the sniper rifle, which clips onto the back. Accessory number one. Then we've got his revolver, which goes in his rear pocket holster here. 
Accessory number two. Then we got the removable knife and a helmet that falls off, proving my earlier point. Boom, how's that for synergy? So we got the knife there, accessory three. We've got the helmet that I was saving for the big reveal, but there you go. Boom, accessory number four. Wow, that's a lot of accessories, Dave. <laughs> but wait, there's more. He's also got, of course, the gun that he's carrying in his hand. Five different removable accessories, all of which can be actually stored on his person to have one complete action figure. Hasbro, how are you doing it, guys? Like, how do you make one thing that's not so good, and then for the same money, this, which is so good? So good. And I can only surmise, from what I understand, it's because you own the G.I. Joe license, therefore all the money goes into the figures. Whereas with other licenses, you have to pay for the right to make them, and that takes off a huge chunk, therefore you've got to reuse things and cut corners. It is what it is. It's, it's commerce. It's business. I'm not complaining. All I'm going to do is just revel in how good these therefore are because they're so good. So just the basic buck body of the figure here. Look at also his actual uh, chest piece, his, his straps, this kind of uh, bullet vest, whatever you want to call it, his harness. It's all a separate piece here that can shift and move around. And I, oh, wait, sorry, I forgot. I forgot his extra gun as well. This is like one of those comedy movies where it's like, do you have any concealed weapons? Yeah, just a few. Gajunk, 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 donk, bump, donk, bump. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six removable accessories on this one little dude here. Absolutely crazy. Now, when you've stripped all these away, the only difference between these two is the skin tone, which is so nice. You know, to actually have that little bit of variety in the two different troopers. When you get a whole bunch of them together, like six, thanks Mark, <laughs> when you got six of them, to have those different shades and skin tones, it makes it so much more just dynamic and believable. These aren't all just a bunch of clones. They're actually different human beings. So yeah, besides the skin tone, these are all the same, I think, unless I find some other optional extras that have fallen off that I haven't even noticed. So we've got this, which is great. This separate harness just adds more layers to him. And then you've got the lovely cobra design there, nicely painted, and then just all of the different layers with the Kevlar and the different textures. You've got the blue, but then with the more padded armor type black parts on there, the separate knees that are the knee pads themselves. And even the knee pads have a huge amount of different sculpting and little details on there. It's the, it's the little the little beady details, they make such a big difference. Going down to the boots now, this beautiful kind of gunmetal black kind of different color shading on the boot. Let me fix my mic here. I don't know if that pop filter makes any difference, but still, we've got a different tone as well. So you've got the flat, the flat matte black on the harness here, but then the more metallic, shiny gunmetal on the metal armor. It's just these extra steps. Very often, when I'm complimenting some figures, especially some of the more sort of average priced figures, I'll say, ah, oh, you didn't have to do that, but you did. But actually, this is what happens when you do all the things that you should do. You set action figures way higher. So many people were telling me, oh, dude, if you like that action figure, you got to get some G.I. Joes. And I was like, nah, I'm just not that interested in G.I. Joes. Now, y'all had my curiosity, but now... You got my attention. And boy, do they have my attention. I love this. Just go up to his face now and just look at the amount of detail just in this tiny little bit. The eyes. The eyes, my friends. are the window to the soul. All right? And realize, realize, realize. All right? Elton John said that. No, I'm kidding. But uh, I think it was Tupac, wasn't it? <laughs> I thought I'd better correct that before someone watching just goes, what? <laughs> we all know Elton John was about music. It was his writing partner who did the lyrics. It's a great film, that Rocket Man. Go check it out. Regardless, this figure is wonderful. And his, his buddy here with the different skin tone. Let, let's, let's take a look because the expression obviously is the same. It's just a case of changing up the tones. I prefer this darker one because I think the darker wash on there as well makes it, I don't know, look a little, a little dirty, a bit more grimy, real, basically. Makes it look more real. But I could just gush over this all day. Do I have nitpicks? Mm, yeah, just, a little, just a little bit, a little susan. All I'm going to say is, 
because the guns clip onto the back, which is great, it means they do have these big, ugly pegs right here. And that's kind of a shame. So if he's holding the gun like, you know, like, like, like that, then you can sometimes see this big, thick, non-gun looking peg sticking out the side and it's like mm, and that, that don't look so good but still that that is a badass on its own looking sniper rifle right there state of the art bang bang so yeah love those guys in fact i got six of them it's pretty cool so now we go into the sort of the more lieutenants of cobra and that's the cool one as well and now stuart you crazy son of a biscuit, great to meet you at Comic-Con the other day, and you hooked me up with a Baron Blood, who's apparently Australian? I think he's Australian. There's one thing that's missing from this here box, I'm going to compliment the box and drop that terrible accent as well, is the fact that there's no little write-up on the back as to who the character is. And very often, you know, when you pick up, like, a Marvel legend of Spider-Man, you, you think, like, do I really need those two sentences telling me who Spider-Man is? It's kind of surplus to requirements. But actually, for this guy here now, for G.I. Joe, I'm like, you know what? The G.I. Joe little, little, you know, summary on the back? That'd be kind of useful. I mean, it's not like I can't go home and just go onto Wikipedia, but still. But looking at the box, Oh my goodness, there is no excuse to not have boxes this pretty, alright? Come on, I, 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 haven't, I haven't been saying Marvel Legends when I've been doing comparisons, but come on. We all know what I'm talking about. And Marvel Legends, it feels a bit phoned in. It feels, Marvel Legends feels like WWE, you know? We're already number one, so why try harder? Just keep on pumping out the same stuff. And whereas with G.I. Joe, they're like, nah, we got, we got to go the extra mile. Look at this painting here on the side this barren blood artwork like not just like oh that's the artwork no this is art work you know what i'm saying here you know whereas like you know there are some stupid videos on the internet and then there are stupid videos and that makes a big difference it's a certain sign of quality i i adore like, i don't know anything about barren blood but then i look at this image and i'm like yeah I get this guy now. So cool. And on the back, freaking Cobra Island. I, this is world building. It needs to be world building for me because I don't know what the deal is with Cobra. Apparently it's like an alien, alien snake aliens. I'm not down with that. I, I want the more Metal Gear Solid real world kind of thing. Again, I headcanon all this stuff. I was looking up at my cosmic characters and I'm like, oh man, my, my Mezco Krieg, he could totally be in there. Hell, Boba Fett and the Mandalorian, they could fit right in as, as Cobra or even G.I. Joe special agents and stuff. There's so much you can do. I'm looking at uh, the Lynx character. That's not her name, but the one from Fortnite. I'm looking at her. She got goes great. A couple of my customs from Robert. There's so many fat figures you can throw in to a G.I. Joe slash Metal Gear type display. I'm just getting all these creative juices coming up now. Dig this so much. So looking at Baron Blood himself, just like I did with the Cobra Trooper, you can take off so many accessories, but then you can lose accessories as well. So he's got his backpack. He's got two rockets. That can go in there. He's got this awesome, I love this revolver handgun, this big chunky modified revolver. Then he's got this pistol as well, which fits beautifully into his holster there. I always love with holstered characters. I love posing them in that sort of like quick, quick firing, half drawn position. It just looks cool. Then also you've got the helmet, which is removable, which is funny because I always want to display the character with the most stuff. But there's so much detail under the helmet. You take this off, you've got this awesome mohawk going on. There's more detailing on the face too. Plus, he's got these dog tags. I love, again, storytelling. Show, don't tell. This tells you he has killed a lot of good guys and collected their dog tags. This is wicked. Granted, it's, it's just kind of a big clump of plastic because you're not going to individually sculpt each one and if you did it would probably just jumble up way too much so he looks actually cleaner like this but again by popping those on there it tells a story and i really really dig that so let's look at the actual figure itself very similar i'm looking at 
to the Cobra Trooper. So talking about reuse, there you go. You can go, ah, uh -uh, Dave, ah, uh ah, -uh, whole lot of reuse going on. Yeah, but it's not so obvious, is it? I mean, there's some lovely, lovely stuff here. So here we've got the same basic body as the, the Trooper, but then we've got the extra kind of uh, robotic. I don't know if it's a robotic arm or if it's just armor on top. If it's just armor, then he really needs to train arms a bit more. Like, stop skipping arm day, dude. Look at those little T-Rex pencils on the side of your body. I'm assuming it's a cybernetic arm. But then, then, oh, the rest of the Kevlar body armor on here looks great. He's got these little, I'm guessing maybe concussive grenades or something on his belt that goes around there. And again, like continuing, it's very cyberpunk. Very, very cyberpunk, augmented machinery, arms, all that kind of thing. Again, I gotta do more reading up on Joe or watch a whole bunch of wiki videos. I'll probably do that. It's easier than reading. So I love what we've got. And then just with the face, this face, dude looks like a scumbag. I like that. I like my bad guys to be bad guys, all right? And this dude just looks like a mean son of a biscuit. And the quality of the amount of scarring, the details, the sculpting, what's going on here, <laughs> so, so good. What I would have liked, although it would have been so difficult to do and you probably wouldn't have even noticed, would have been to have had a little more red, a bit of a red glow in the eye there because on the artwork on the box, that red really, it sticks out to me. I'm like, oh, that's really like, like, like it's, it's glowing ominously. You can't really see that. It's just, just black on there. But even if they did put a tiny little red line, it's too small to really notice. But still, the 12 o'clock shadow, the moustache, the, just the sneer. It's a real sneer on him. That's a real bad guy look. I, I love characters where you can just look at and go, yeah. That's a hero. That's a villain. I'm now going through these various action figure websites as we are all off to do going, okay, who else do I need now? And I'm not going to buy any more because it will just get out of hand. I've got a great little Cobra army now. That's all I need. There are, whew, Lord knows. There are enough things to spend our money on. But yeah, when you start putting this guy together, a similar gripe to the infantry guys is that the accessories, they can sort of fall off and move around and be a bit loose. In particular, I was looking for these rockets because they had fallen out because they don't really clip into the backpack very well. They, they do fit on there, as you can see, but it's very, very loose. They will fall off relatively easily. So you've got to pose him, and then leave him. You know, if these were actual toys designed for children, which let's face it, they're not, then you would lose these accessories in a heartbeat. Luckily, they're designed for adult collectors and we know how to take care of our stuff. So yeah, with the helmet on there as well, the backpack, the extra guns, this dude's so cool. I will admit, I guess you gotta have Storm Shadow, haven't you? I mean, if, you're, if, if you've got a Cobra army, you've got to have Storm Shadow and maybe Baroness, okay? Those are the two, Storm Shadow and Baroness. And the, oh, and the Silver Face guy, Destro. Okay, Destro, Baroness, Storm Shadow, and um, Masky, Mask McGee. You know, um, the not Taskmaster, Bush, no, not Bushmaster. It's, it's not even called Master, is he? You know who I mean, the disguise dude. Those are the four, and then we're done. And I'm not even going to go on to the Joes, all right? I just, even though I've positioned the Cobra guys around Megatron, and that looks amazing, so maybe I could position a bunch of Joes around Optimus Prime. That would be hella cool. No, no, focus. Okay, no, this is awesome. This is great. This is great. This is great. You guys are great for hooking me up with these guys. This was a channel donation when I was doing the live stream at Comic-Con. This dude from Stuart again, and all these troopers from Mark, you lunatic. Guys, thank you so much. I love this. I love what Hasbro are doing with G.I. Joe. Dang it! I just love toys. This is the best hobby in the world. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you are collecting G.I. Joe, what figures should I get to continue building this collection? Because let's face it, I'm hooked. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, keep displaying model behavior. G'day, you flaming mongrels. My name's Baron Blood, and I'm here to tell all you, uh, you, 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 you mongrels, 
that you've got to go over to Displaying Model Behaviors Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Displaying Model Behaviour. Just like all these bloody buggers did over here. And then you can watch all the exclusive videos on there. And also, go get yourself a Model Behaviour t-shirt. Just like this this gentleman over here did. Uh, doesn't he look good? He's got a Model Behaviour mug as well. He's going he's going the whole hog with that one. Uh, he's, a, he's a good brother. Uh, all right then, uh, go go do all that. And uh, uh, get out of here, you little you get all buggers. Ah, I'm a villain. Uh, that's why I'm allowed to use rude words. Up a coffee, up a coffee, up a coffee. Up a coffee. Up a coffee.